it's my great pleasure to welcome you here on behalf of the University of Manchester to this, this magnificent hall on a, a great occasion um, to celebrate great success. Students or doctors, um, we're, we're really proud of what you've achieved and we look forward to celebrating it today. We have great expectations for you in the future. It's a pleasure to welcome you here and your, your relatives, friends, family who, who've joined you on this great occasion. It's a particular pleasure for me to welcome Dr. John Hayworth here today as to receive our outstanding alumnus award. John is um, a consultant in emergency medicine in Southampton and the first president of the College of Emergency Medicine. Um, and and you'll, you'll hear more about his achievements and hopefully that will be an inspiration to you um, in future years. It's also my great pleasure to invite Professor Tony Fremont, the head of Manchester Medical School, to give the address today. Please do take over, Tony, and um, continue the proceedings. Thank you, Vice President and Dean. Um, it's also my pleasure to, to welcome you all, um, particularly the graduates of the University of Manchester, and of course, your family and friends, um, to this, the Whitworth Hall, at the very heart of this great university. I think that this building epitomizes the University of Manchester, a gritty northern English university built by proud Victorians to celebrate their achievements and those of what was in their day the greatest city in the greatest empire that the world has ever seen. Their time was one of technological drive and progress. And that's what we're here today uh, to celebrate. This university can trace itself back to 1824, but medical education in the city first started in 1752, when the newly constructed Manchester Royal Infirmary took its first students. The School of Medicine itself was officially opened in October 1874 by Thomas Huxley, one of the great exponents of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. And in 1883, the school was given its charter um, to award the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, as we're doing still today. The foundations of the structure of the modern Manchester Medical School, the vision that drives us forward, and the liberal principles that make the Manchester Medical School and its program famous across the world, were laid in 1950s by Lord Stopford. The building that bears his name, which has become the focus of the first two years of medical education, was opened in 1973. In those days, the school admitted 200 medical students into its first year, and a further 75 medical students from the University of St. Andrews uh, taken into the clinical years. That students graduating today came to Manchester from St. Andrews, and that members of the St. Andrews academic staff are also here today is a reflection of the strength of the bond that links our two great universities. Because of the quality of the education that we offered here in Manchester, as the number of doctors required by the increasing size of the NHS, um, so Manchester was asked to train more young doctors. And today, we have nearly 400 students enter our first year, 80 St Andrews students enter our third year, and a further 20 students from other universities around the world also enter into that third year. We are the largest universe medical school in, in Europe with 2,100 medical students, and of those, 300 come from countries outside the European Union. If we gauge the success of our education in terms of employability and the reputation of our young doctors, then this has to be one of the most successful medical schools in the UK. 95% of our students will enter one of their first three choices in foundation programs, which compares with a national average of just 88%. Doctors graduating from our medical school are recognized around the country 
for their outstanding understanding of modern medicine, their ability to communicate with patients and the intense respect that they have for the rights of patients and staff. Gaining these skills is not easy. Ours is the most intense training programme in the UK, but it is built on sound educational principles and our graduates have a head start over all the competition, which at a time of medical graduate unemployment is very important. So we're here today to celebrate the achievements of students who by hard work and sheer determination have graduated from the most intense and most relevant medical education programme in the UK. They've lived up to the principles that would have been recognised and lauded by our Victorian forefathers, and they will take that legacy out into the world. We are extremely proud of their achievements, as I'm sure are you, their relatives and friends. And it seems, therefore, only fitting that we and you should be given the opportunity to applaud them in recognition of their achievements. But their achievements are not theirs alone. The position that they have reached today could not have been gained without support. We, the Manchester Medical School, have given them a strong foundation on which to build their careers. But they owe something much greater and more long-lasting to you, their friends and families. Whilst we have made them doctors, you have made them the people that they are. I get to speak to many of our students and find out a little of their backgrounds. I know how much they appreciate and understand what you have given them. And so, I am giving them now the opportunity to thank you publicly. And so I will ask all our students, all our graduates to stand. When I ask them to do something, they rarely do. So this is a, this is a great pleasure. I want you to identify your friends and relatives, and I want you to wave to them. Off you go. And don't be shy, you can wave back. Thank you all very much. You can sit down again now. Thank you. What I'm about to say is code, and I hope you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Um, one thing that our students are famous for uh, is their forthright and feisty approach to their medical school. That's the code. There's another bit of code coming here. Through their thoughtful and generous feedback, they, <laughs> like their predecessors before them, have changed the way we educate. And from the bottom of my heart, I have to thank you for that. One of the innovations that this year's graduates have requested is a restructuring of the graduation ceremonies that, so that they can graduate with their colleagues from the sector hospitals with whom they've studied in the last three years. And as a special request, in recognition of their role in steering their education and keeping them on track in their highly formative clinical years, our graduates have requested that each student should be presented to the vice president and dean by their own hospital dean. So it's a particular pressure to welcome Professor Lawrence Cotter from MRI and uh, Professor Mark Pugh from Preston. <laughs> that was unscripted and spontaneous, so thank you guys. <laughs> Before we get on with the presentations, however, um, I have another task to perform. As the, uh, as the Vice President and Dean has intimated, we, at this ceremony, are doing a presentation to our outstanding alumnus of the year. I hope that in future years, one or more of our graduates who are uh, seated here today will be presented with this prestigious award. To those graduates who think, ah, oh, lightly, um, I should say that I have seen our um, uh, our outstanding alumnus' um, uh, medical records, not his 
personal medical records. Um, but you need to know that, uh, that I am the guardian of all your UCAS forms onwards, and I therefore know more about you than you care to remember. And I know more about him uh, than he cares to remember too. So I doubt that 35 years ago, sitting where you are now, the recipient of today's award would even have expected uh, to be on the stage today. But I hate to say it, guys, it just goes to show how wrong even a graduate of Manchester Medical School can be. So it's therefore my great pleasure and honour um, to give the citation to this year's award recipient, Dr John Hayward. Vice President and Lean, De sorry, and Dean. Lean, of course, but Dean as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, graduands, in the build-up to today's ceremony, I learned a revealing statistic, that around 20 million people are treated at emergency departments each year. And as I'm sure our students can tell you, most of those are at either MRI or Preston. Almost one third of the entire population of this country therefore passes through uh, A&E departments. It's a statistic that brings home the value of a life devoted to patient care. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to introduce an individual who has invested his remarkable career in transforming the model of emergency medicine throughout the UK and beyond. The University of, Alum the University of Manchester Alumni Association Award for Outstanding Alumnus 2012 goes to Dr John Hayworth, who we already been introduced to. Following the example of his father, Bill, John became the second generation of his family to study medicine at Manchester, a tradition his own son James would later continue. His time with us coincided with a watershed moment for the teaching of medicine at this university and the medical school moving from its original historic site to its present location in the Stopford building. As a, more code. As a student, Dr Hayworth successfully balanced a portfolio of hard study, eclectic musical events and sport regularly watching football at both the red and the blue sides of Manchester. He even found time for reflection at the old and new Conti night spots and the legendary Plaza dining experience. To show the true nature of his talents as a student, I'm reliably informed by a very, very senior member of the administrative staff that he was even voted rear of the year in 1974 <laughs> by the staff and students at Hope Hospital. <coughs> I hope his children will make him suffer for that. <laughs> it was not the social life, but a love of medicine that brought him to Manchester. However, he still vividly remembers a lecture given on his very first day by Professor Neil Kessel, who prophesied that friends made at university would remain friends for life. And so it proved for Dr. Hayworth, who has kept in close touch with a number of his peers and is already looking forward to their next reunion in October. On graduation, Dr. Hayworth's first posts were at Manchester Royal Infirmary and Withenshaw Hospital, followed by teaching anatomy at the medical school and surgical jobs at Guy's in London, in Cambridge and in Bath. All seem set for a successful mainstream career in medicine. Until that is an advert for the Royal Navy that promised to broaden your horizons, took him on a rather different course. He signed up for a short service commission on a Royal Navy destroyer and at a naval air base, achieving the rank of Surgeon Lieutenant Commander. Through this, he gained not just medical experience, but also the sort of leadership qualities that would stand him in good stead later in his career. It was during his time in the Navy that he experienced his Damascene moment of enlightenment regarding emergency medicine setting the tone for the rest of his life. When he returned from the high seas, he carried out his senior registrar training at Hope Hospital in Salford before securing consultant jobs at Portsmouth and later at the Southampton General Hospital. His role in Southampton proved a career-defining opportunity, with Dr Hayworth overseeing the extraordinary growth of the apartment from one to 16 consultants, now seeing 95,000 patients a year. The department is now recognised as one of the flagships in cl clinical practice in the UK. As lead consultant in the emergency department of Southampton, he drove through a number of initiatives, including consultant-led care, 
clinical decision units, and a state-of-the-art IT system. In typically humble fashion, he describes emergency medicine as the quintessential team event. But in fact, much of the success in pushing emergency medicine up the political agenda in the UK has been down to Dr. Hayward's efforts. He was part of the steering team which formed the new College of Emergency Medicine, and he became its first elected president, having previously been president of the British Association for Emergency Medicine. He also led the team securing the first independent building for the specialty, putting emergency medicine quite literally on the map. Currently, he serves as vice president of the European Society of Emergency Medicine. Behind the scenes, he has strived to place emergency care at the top of the medical and political agenda, with visits to number 10 and his work alongside the Department of Health's emergency care team, a collaboration which helped to deliver the much-heralded four-hour waiting times in emergency departments up and down the country. <coughs> Always eager to spread his message to the widest possible audience, Dr. Hayworth has been a frequent media commentator on emergency care issues. His appearances include BBC's City Hospital and Channel 4's Trauma ER with Gunther von Hagens. And if that's not enough, he also has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the inimitable John Humphreys on the Today programme. And for more than 20 years, has provided the overnight medical cover at Glastonbury Festival via a very large tent in a very, very muddy field. Elsewhere, he continues to follow his passion for transforming emergency care quality, thanks to collaborations with the National Clinical Advisory Team and the NHS Institute on Ambulatory Emergency Care. His dedication to the cause has taken him around the world, organizing conferences on emergency medicine and helping countries across Europe deliver more consistent and high quality care. Throughout it all, he has remained a good friend of this university and of the city over many years. So it's an honor to welcome him back today for this very special occasion. Vice President and Dean, I present to you the 2012 Award for Outstanding Alumnus, Dr. John Hayworth. Thank you very much indeed for the breaking news. Uh, rear of the year uh, comments. Notice it was only for one year, of course, and uh, there was no other competition whatsoever, uh, obviously. Uh, just for one moment, thank you. Vice President, uh, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, uh, good afternoon. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for those kind words of um, introduction. I'm very humbled and rather overwhelmed by this uh, award. Uh, I'm deeply honoured. Uh, thank you. Congratulations to all of the graduates uh, here today, uh, and your family, and friends, and significant others, and the entire supporting cast who's allowed you to be so successful. This is a fantastic achievement. You are doctors, and the thoroughly deserved result of years of jolly hard work, balanced, of course, by a bit of play, and quite rightly so. As a result of these superb endeavours, you're now in the fantastic position of being at the threshold of your career, and almost infinite, exciting opportunities await. I'm just a bit jealous. You are very fortunate uh, indeed. I'm towards the other end of the career agenda, and I wonder if I could share uh, a couple of perspectives uh, from this point on the career path. First of all, medicine is a great career. It is. Like every job, it has its ups uh, and occasional downs, but it is the most rewarding and fulfilling job uh, available. When in the distant, distant future, over the horizon, not quite in a galaxy far, far away, uh, you reach my stage and uh, you ought to look in the mirror and ask yourself these two questions. They're not pass or fail questions, by the way. First question, do I have a body of work? And you will. A body of work is not about awards, fabulous uh, as they are. It's about the care that you have provided for your patients. It's about the people that you have worked with in delivering that care, and it's about the good that you have done you will have that body of work. Question two, have I made a difference? I can absolutely guarantee the answer to both of these questions will be yes. The sun 
will not always shine on your career. There will be occasional moments, occasional hiccups, but that's all in the script. When that happens to you, and it's happened to me, my top tips are as follows. Learn from that experience, regroup, improve, and then move on. A body of work is not about a bound volume of your greatest hits, a DVD of your greatest consultations or your greatest operations. It's about that feeling when you look back, what have I done, have I done well? And you will. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Your success will occur no matter what branch of medicine you choose to become involved in, whether you choose to tackle the national and international agenda or those in your local postcode. From time to time, you will think that your progress is a little slower than you had anticipated, and you will tend to focus on the clunkier aspects uh, of your work that still need fixing. It's only when you reach the later stages that you can look back and see the real difference that you will have made. I chose a career in emergency medicine uh, and found this was the perfect fit for my personality traits, uh, enjoying the consistently unpredictable, and emergency medicine is constantly surprising. Quite a lot like life, really. Uh, I also found that uh, the unpredictability was good, an ability to keep a relatively cool head in life or death situations, and also I found useful having an immensely limited uh, attention span, which is perfect uh, for emergency medicine. Although I admit to a certain conflict of interest, emergency medicine may be the most important specialty uh, in medicine, uh, the most exciting and possibly the sexiest. Uh, of course, um, uh, everybody in emergency medicine looks like George Clooney uh, or the other cast of ER rather than BBC's casualty. We've made it compulsory. Um, and so that's a good start. In England, as was mentioned just now, we see almost 20 million new patients in our departments every year. Most of them, in fact, are on my shift. And by the time you add their friends and their relatives and their carers um, et al, it's practically everybody. We have the immense privilege and responsibility of being there for all patients, all ages, all illnesses, all injuries, at all hours. Patients know that the emergency department is always there no matter what their social circumstances. Patients come to us in their hour of need, usually in pain and often scared. The emergency department is often rightly described as being the shop window of the NHS, and we passionately believe that all patients should receive the best possible care, comparable to any hospital in the world, no matter what time of the day or night uh, they arrive. We believe this, and we know the public share this view. And we believe passionately also that emergency care must be right at the top of the medical and the political uh, agenda. And I know that you will all agree with that uh, uh, completely. We need that to ensure that all patients receive the care they both expect uh, and deserve. Emergency medicine, I've described there. Other specialties are available, uh, of course. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Manchester is a superb university with an outstanding medical school in one of the world's great cities. I am, and I'm sure you all are too, immensely proud to be a Manchester graduate and part of the Manchester family. This award is incredibly important to me, and I'm profoundly moved. I'm particularly pleased that uh, my family most of whom are also Manchester graduates, uh, are able to join us today. Almost finally, I have two absolute top tips. One, enjoy medicine, it is brilliant. Secondly, please, please look after yourselves. Make sure that the work-life balance occurs and then is maintained. There is life outside medicine and you must enjoy everything that life has to offer. Friends and family are absolutely crucial uh, throughout. At medical school, you will have made friends for life. Please work particularly hard to keep them close forever. It's worth it. You share a common bond, and you will need each other. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, graduates and all, have fun, be happy, take care, and think on. Thank you very much indeed.
Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, with very great pleasure, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, with honours and distinction, Mary Cheshire. Stephen Broom. Thomas Richard Gedman. Charlotte Mary Williams. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with Honours, Emily Jane Hamilton Cottrell. Jordan Fletcher. Elizabeth Katie Hall. Maria Harrington Focht. Neil Richard Houghton. Amy Pedersen. Sarah Packard Rosen. Caroline Peck Joy Yap. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Loué Abde. <laughs> Shahira Adiba Abdul Halim. <laughs> Raymond Shane Yek Teen Ahmad. <laughs> Adarin Sola. Alatiche Adam Alata Ibrahim Mohammed Ali Nawaz Ali Mohanad Amori. <laughs> Michael Irvin Barrett. <laughs> Louisa Hrian Bird. <laughs> Lindsay Black. Ian San Boon. <laughs> Daniel Botwright. <laughs> Deborah Jane Bauer. <laughs> Sarah Charlotte Brockbank. David Budd. <laughs> Alexander Michael Budds. <laughs> Michael Burke. <laughs> Nicole Caulfield. Pak Yin Chung.
Mohammed Daniel bin Daud. Gillian Devlin. <laughs> Owen Hugh Donnelly. <laughs> Christopher Doyle. <laughs> Elinid Ruth Duncan Parry. Leanne Dupley. <laughs> Joseph Duncan Fisk. <laughs> Daniel Fitzgibbon. <laughs> Simon George Alexander Grant. David Andrew Patrick Green. <laughs> Salman Hafez. <laughs> Neil, Neil James Harvey. <laughs> Saddam Hashmi. Shona Catherine Hasty, <laughs> Patrick Hale, <laughs> Rachel Elizabeth Hurd, <laughs> Anna Rose Hedges. Joshua Hemant. <laughs> Josephina Anna Ingrid Herlin Highland. <laughs> Christopher Kevin Howarth. <laughs> Andrew Dia Jabaru. Jason Jacob. <laughs> Razmeet Kaur Kainth. <laughs> Oshan John Francis Keenan. <laughs> Rabia Khan. Mehvish Khan. <laughs> Sidra Khan. <laughs> Ashwin Khanna. <laughs> Bobby King. Emma Kitlowski. <laughs> Monica Krishnan. <laughs> Pei Huali. <laughs> David Kai Dick Lung. Jonathan Zhang Ming Lim. Paul Lochnan. Aaron Jufan Lo. David McCollum.
Fate Musmaina Mohammed Sahami. Khalis Mohammed Mia. Ewan Alexander Mills. Madiha Mohammed Lockman. Noor Jana Mohammed Radzif. Mohammed Afik Mohammed Zain. Alistair Monroe. Laura Nielsen. Gabriel Olaya. Thomas Martin Maliakumali. <laughs> Bryony e. Patrick. <laughs> Gursharan Rai. <laughs> Fazana Yasmin Raja. Catherine Ann Rea. <laughs> Nur Dalila Sahidan. <laughs> Fiza Sarah Salam. <laughs> Shafra Salam. Raisa Sana Sawati. <laughs> Catherine Mira Sheridan. <laughs> Beth Alexandra Shaw. <laughs> Anne Marie Lavinia Simons. Shun Wai Sin. <laughs> Peter Mark Smith. <laughs> Gillian Lucy Smith. <laughs> Albert Chan Ching Tang. Noreen Tanwir. <laughs> Osama Taylor. <laughs> Claire Louise Thwaites. <laughs> Cristiano Vanzella. Lily Wheeler. <laughs> James Chen Lon Wong. <laughs> Arthur Chen Yu Yang. <laughs> Noor Salzala. Asma Binti Zamamuri.
Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, it gives me great pleasure to present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, with honours and distinction, Katie Morris. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, with honours, Caroline Clay. Adam Thomas Hancock. Aparna Madhavan. Holly Louise Maxwell. Annapurna Yogesh Pai. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Dinesh Prathipan Alexander. Haroon Ali. Asliana Alias. Laura Ashton. Malia Azim. Mary Buckle. <laughs> Kirsten Marie McFarlane Cameron. <laughs> James Campbell. <laughs> Niharika Chimlaconda. Lucy Cornthwaite. <laughs> Candace Danielle Crichton. <laughs> Errol Ann Davis. <laughs> Costas Elterios Fantis. Diana Frimpong. <laughs> Elizabeth Claire Gregson. <laughs> Sophie Jane Hancock. William Patrick Hedges. <laughs> Catherine Ann Hopping. <laughs> Luke William Hunt. <laughs> Mamuna Hussain. Peter Douglas Hutchinson. <laughs> Rohail Ahmed Ifkatar. <laughs> Emma Louise Illingworth. <laughs> Vanessa King. Tiong Ren Lau.
Max William Levens. Eileen Lim. Fraser Duncan James McNichol. Marius McGogarty. Rebecca Catherine Marchmont. Simon McCrory. <laughs> Naomi Ellen Miller Biot. <laughs> Shamama Tul Habib Mir. <laughs> Lukman Faz Mohammed. Mohammed Alwi Mohammed Helmi. <laughs> Craig Andrew Murphy. <laughs> Kang Xiong Ng. <laughs> Cheong Man Ng. Abdullah Farmi Nick Mutazin. <laughs> Daniel Jingi Ui. <laughs> Sarah O'Riordan. <laughs> Dominic Ket Shungpang. Andrew Peeling. <laughs> Saika Corey. <laughs> James Redfern. <laughs> Francesca Dominique Reader. Eleanor Riley. <laughs> Sarvinder Singh Saini. <laughs> Divian Sankaran. <laughs> Emily Ania Jane Saber. Mastura Binti Sharam. <laughs> Usman Azhar Sheikh. <laughs> Sean Elliot Sutton. <laughs> Chitra Swayam Prakasam. Syed Sher Al Jafri Syed Sobri. <laughs> Sui Lean Tan. <laughs> Vanessa Yen Lin Tan. <laughs> Pei Chi Tan. Varik Tia. <laughs> J. 
Joanna Claire White. Jonathan John Han Wong. Rakas Yousaf. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, with very great pleasure, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with European Studies, with honours and distinction, Geraldine Klein. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with European Studies, with honours, Alexandra Naomi Hay. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with European Studies, Artemis Maria Castricianakis. Alexandra Jane Louise Matthews. Victor Hugo Fialo Lopez. Hannah Bolter. Mia Rodziewicz. And for the award of Postgraduate Certificate in Advanced Practice Intervention for Mental Health, Primary Mental Health Care, Sean Clifton Collins. Vice President. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, um, as I intimated in my, uh, um, my initial address, the students have asked for innovation. They've started a new tradition, and I couldn't let them get away with that. We have to have new traditions all the time. It's at this stage in the ceremony where I usually would ask the students to stand and to take an affirmation that I read, but we're not going to do that this year. We're going to do something I think rather more positive than that. And for this, I require the help of two of our graduates. And so I would ask doctors, Neil Houghton and Katie Morris, to come up to the stage to help me with the affirmation. So what we're going to do is, rather than the graduates just to affirm their affirmation, we're going to read it out with them. And so I would therefore li like all the graduates, the new doctors today graduating from the University of Manchester to stand. Make sure you've got your books open at the right page. And being led by Neil and Katie, you will now state your affirmation. I affirm that I will speak up. <laughs> oh, sorry, page? 59. Page 59. <laughs> it's like the first lecture I give at year one. Now turn to page 59 in your textbook. We'll start again. I affirm, I affirm that I will make, make the care, care of my patients my first concern, to treat every patient politely and considerately, respect patients' dignity and privacy, 
listen to patients and respect their views, give patients information in a way they can understand, respect the right of patients to be fully involved in decisions about their care, keep my professional knowledge and skills up to date, recognize the limits of my professional competence, be honest and trustworthy, respect and protect confidential information, make sure my personal beliefs do not prejudice my patient's care, act quickly to protect my patients from risk if I have good reason to believe that I or a colleague may not be fit for to practice, avoid the use of my position as a doctor, work with my colleagues in a way that best serve patients' interests. In all these matters, I will never discriminate unfairly against my patients or colleagues. I will always be prepared to justify my actions to them. Well done, everybody. Please sit yourselves down again. You guys want to come Congratulations to everyone. It's, it's been a, a moving and inspiring ceremony. Um, on behalf of the university, I extend to you once again congratulations to everyone graduating here on your fantastic achievements. And we all wish you every success and happiness in your future careers and your future lives. On behalf of the university, I now declare this ceremony closed. Thank you.